hello guys you're welcome to another video now in this video I'm going to be showing you how to reverse engineer an Android application so there are times when you might be trying to write your own application and you might be stuck and you might want to look at some other application as reference you know you want to look at how some application is implemented or you know basic stuff like that uh, or you might have some other purpose for reverse engineering the application um, now when it comes to um, legal uh, like you know uh, when it comes to legal legal stuff about um, reverse engineering an Android app um, I don't really know the details but as far as I know um, it's illegal to distribute applications that you reverse engineer um, if you own the application, then you can probably reverse engineer it uh, for various reasons. Um, but it's generally uh, wrong for you to distribute an application that you have probably reverse engineered and modified its source code. So if you want to, if you want to learn, then it's probably um, good. If you want to just use it for learning and educational purposes, but. If you're trying to reverse engineer an application because you want to uh, repackage it and you know redistribute it, then it's probably violating a lot of the licenses of the developer that created the original application. Um, so with that said, let's just continue with this video. Um, a couple of things you're gonna need before you can follow along with this video. The first you're gonna need is, of course, you need to have the JDK installed. Uh, which is the Java development kit and if you are an Android developer and you're doing Android development then I expect that you already have some form of um, uh, you have Android Studio then you're gonna have the Java development kit installed alright um, the next tool you're gonna need is this dex to jar file um, the next thing you're gonna need is this dex to jar um, a software or application now what this dex to jar allows uh, helps you do is that it's all we're gonna use to read the dex files that are inside of our APK and we're gonna use it to um, we're basically gonna use the dex file to convert or uh, to extract all our class files and then it's gonna put it inside of a jar file so this dex to jar actually contains a lot of tools for basically uh, you know working with Android applications but we're only going to be using the dex to jar um, part of this library and then we're going to use the I'm gonna leave a link to the uh, in description to this file uh, to this project uh, it's a zip file I don't know um, so once I I'm gonna leave a link to the description so you can download it and once you've downloaded this I already did that so I'm not gonna do it again um, so once you download this zip file, we're going to extract it in a minute and we're going to start working with it. Um, the next one we're going to need is this Java decompiler. So this is called JD GUI. And as you can see from the screenshot here, uh, it basically allows you to open up a doc class file and then it um, you know, shows you the contents. It basically decompiles an Android class file and shows you the contents of the uh, class file. So this is the link to the um, library or to the application, sorry. Uh, we're going to be downloading the application here. So you can see it's just three megabytes um, here. Um, now you can choose whatever you want. You can download the one for Windows, you know, for whatever. I just picked the jar file here because it's, I just think, I just think it's better. You can choose whatever you want. Um, I just picked this one that's 3 megabytes and um, yeah there is also another one for Eclipse I don't really know much about how that works and I don't really care um, just take the first one you find and make sure you download it um, I'm also gonna leave a link to this um, you know Java decompiler in the description so once you've downloaded both the next thing we have to do is I'm gonna go back uh, I'm gonna go into the terminal the next thing we have to do is to find an APK file that we want to work with. Now I have an APK file here, but what I, I also wanted to show you guys how to extract an APK file from your device. So for example, you might want to um, 
you might want to you might have an, an application that you want to extract the APK file from uh, your device so this is how you're gonna do it uh, basically you're going to use um, you're going to use ADB shell PM list packages um, so if you if you just hit this you're gonna get a list of all the packages of applications that I installed inside of your um, device so in my case I'm going to be using this Android virtual mic example so basically I'm going to grab Android uh, basically virtual mic so this is like part of the application package name as you can see here so this is what I'm looking for right I'm also gonna need now I'm gonna need to get the path to the APK file so that I can read it uh, using ADB so ADB shell PM path then you're going to um, paste in the virtual mic thing get out of my face uh, so once you paste that you're gonna just um, hit enter on your keyboard and then you're gonna get the path to the package so this is the path to this APK and if I copy this then I can do ADB um, shell and of course you need to have ADB on your path I'm sure you know ADB if you're an Android developer you should have heard of ADB um, so you're gonna do ADB shell um, I believe it's I'm um, sorry ADB pool and then you're gonna specify like the path to the APK and the name you want to name the APK so I'm just gonna say pool.apk alright so once you're done with that, once that is successful, if you list, you're going to find that you now have your pool, your pulled the APK file here. And we can start working with that. All right. Um, so that's how you extract APKs from your device. And now that we've extracted the APK, the next thing we have to do is to open up the APK so that we can find out what's inside. And to do that, APK is just a zip file, so you can use the unzip utility inside of the terminal. If you're not, if you're on Windows, then you can just open it up. Um, make sure you take this pool.apk and you rename it to .zip so that you can actually unzip it using your Windows utility. All right. So we're gonna do unzip pool.apk and we're gonna specify the, the destination to be pool. All right. So you can see that that works. And if you list, you're gonna see that we have a pool directory here. And if you see the into pool, you're gonna see that you're gonna see something that resembles an Android, um, you know, application structure. So you can see we have our classes .dex and our classes two .dex. Right. So what we could do now is to um, extract. We now need to, you know, convert these .dex files. We need to convert um, these .dex files to a jar file. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna go to uh, downloads. Um, where we have our uh, what is it called? Uh, what did I download here? So we downloaded the Dex to Jar. Good. So we're looking for Dex to Jar. So here, this is what it's called. As you can see, the file name here says Dex Tools. So you're gonna open that up, and here we're gonna extract it. So we're gonna extract the Dex Tools. Uh, I'm gonna keep that in Development Playground. All right. So once you have extracted that, you need to, I'm going to create a new tab, I'm going to open up a new tab here, and I'm going to cd to development, playground, dex tools, good. So now that we're in the dex tools, now you can see we have a, we have a couple of things that we can actually work with here, and I want to see the contents of the D2J, um, Dex to jar. So this is the this is the one we're actually looking for. So if you're on Windows, then you're gonna be looking at the bat file here, and if you're on Linux, then you're gonna be looking at this .sh file here. So this is the one we want to use because this is the one we want to uh, use to convert the .class files here, um, the .dex files here to actual um, Java classes. So we're gonna take the dex to jar. Dot sh, all right. So I want to see the contents and uh, yeah. So basically, it just uses Java to <coughs> excuse me. Um, so it just uses Java to do this. So we could do this. Uh, let's just do d2j uh, dex2 jar and let's see what happens. 
all right there we go so we need to provide it a file so the file we're going to provide it we're going to uh, move away from here i want to bring the working directory for this so that i can copy it and then i'm going to go back here i'm going to paste that and then next to jar that sh um, so I want to specify the classes the dex so classes the dex classes two the dex so this is going to extract both and we're gonna wait so once we're done you're gonna see that we now have two jar files inside of here very simple um, so what we're gonna do now is to go get our JD GUI download that we have which is this one the Java decompiler um, that should also be somewhere in the downloads here for me uh, so we're gonna go to the JD GUI here and I'm gonna go to I'm gonna CD to my uh, downloads um, of course you need to have like your Java um, compiler on your path or else most of these things are not gonna work right so I'm going to do Java jar and then I'm going to open up the JD GUI here um so basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, open up this all right so jd gui is open so we're going to click on file open file and then we're going to uh go to where my files live like where the file that i extracted i extracted the file here in android virtual mic so basically where you extracted the jar files is where we're going to go extracted it here and pulled yeah so we have pulled and now you can see we have classes uh, dexijar and this so I'm gonna take the first one and now you can see that we have just the classes dexijar only has this R thing and we don't know what that means so we could close that that is useless in this case so we're going to go back and open up the file again and we're going to take the classes 2 now. So it looks like the classes 2 is what contains most of my project file. Um, so you can see now that this is exactly what we have. And so you can see that if you click on the class file now, you can read most of my code and everything I implemented. Right? Um, I need to close like, I need to close all this. Oh, what is this? There we go. So I'm going to open the main activity again. And you can now see that you can read my code. Um, you can see it, it actually shows variable names properly. Um, you can see here this is like status. And so using this, you can actually um, basically read like how I implemented like most of what I implemented. Um, some of it don't make sense. For example, this button does set on click listener where you have this uh, external synthetic lambda thing you can see that it's just empty there is nothing in there and um, there's actually a way you can get you know better like better decompilation um, this requires you to use the IntelliJ IDE the IntelliJ IDE decompilation is actually much better but this one isn't that bad but there's a couple of code that I wrote that I cannot find here. For example, uh, most of the code I implemented was actually in the uh, where is it? Uh, was actually in the buttons on Quick Listener, and I cannot find it here. Okay. Um, so if I check, you're gonna see that it doesn't live here anymore. But that is how you can um, decompile or reverse engineer. And using this, you can actually edit the code as much as you want. And once you're done editing the code, then you're going to just use one of the Dex2Jar um, project files, uh, one of the Dex2Jar um, tools to actually, you know, rebuild or, you know, repack the application. Like I said, reverse engineering is someone else's application. Um, should mostly be used just for learning purposes. You know, if you want to implement something and you're stuck and you're trying to figure out how someone else implemented it, then that is when you should reverse engineer someone else's code. And another thing you should take note of is that I didn't use anything like Minify enabled, or I didn't do like ProGuard shrinking and um, obfuscation of this 
application if I did then most of these names are actually gonna change alright so all these names that make sense inside of this decompilation are actually gonna be nonsense when it is decompiled so I want you to take note of that um, that'll be all for this video I hope you guys have learned something and thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video uh, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you like this video if you don't like the video make sure you hit the um, what is it called the downvote button but also make sure to subscribe all right thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys bye